Greetings all, it's Max, and we're back, and was Jesus the Son of God eternally? Man, that's a weird question. Um, it sounds like a philosophical question. Um, it's been coming up on the internet, and apparently this is a thing. Um, and, you know, people can believe whatever they want to about that stuff. It really doesn't matter in terms of salvation at all. At all. But there are certain people out there who are calling others heretics for what they believe in, in this, that, and the other thing, calling them liars or something like that. And we're going to see here, and this is on Christian Courier, we're going to go through this article, and I'm going to go through a little bit of scripture about, was Jesus the Son of God eternally? Well, was he the Son of Man eternally? Because if you say he's the Son of God eternally, then you also have to say he's the Son of Man eternally, because that's what Jesus said, he's the Son of Man. Even though in the beginning it says that Jesus was the Word, and then in Revelation, he's the Lamb, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You can see where I'm going. There is nobody out there in mainstream Christianity who teaches Jesus is the perpetual Son of God the Father. Because that would mean that he would be created later. And then, of course, you get into a whole thing of, well, that's how you get the Holy Spirit is being the feminine aspect. Oh, there you go. Now you have God the Father uh, mating with the Holy Spirit to create Jesus Christ. God the Son eternally. And I'm going to tell you, this is right out the bat. It's a Catholic doctrine, a very Catholic doctrine. My best friend, devout Catholic, you all know who the guy is off the web page that old Brian wants to talk about. Um, is not a big guy with doctrine. Is not a big guy with going to uh, whatever mass or church or whatever. Does it occasionally. But when I talked to him about Jesus Christ, he was adamant that Jesus Christ was God the Son. No, no, the Son of God. Not God the Son. He was the Son of God. As in a created beating. So this entire doctrine of Jesus Christ being eternally the Son of God is Catholic. It's Catholic. The entire thing. And all I'm going to do is going to be a very boring, um, long thing. And this is philosophy. This is not a doctrinal issue. It's not a salvation issue. It's philosophy. And I know a lot of a lot of people out there are mad. Um, I uploaded uh, Theodore's video about Peter Ruckman and Theodore's ideas about the Trinity. Well, Theodore is not saying, believe like him or you're not saved. Theodore is just explaining his position. I know Robert Breaker had a problem with it even too. It's like the, the guy is just explaining how he views the Trinity. And I talked to the guy for 20 minutes before I even uploaded the video. I'm like, so what do you mean by this? And what do you mean by that? And what do you mean by this? And what are you talking about here? And so he brings up the Greek text to explain his position. The entire point of the video was Ruckman's body, soul, and spirit teaching. That was the entire point. And his personal beliefs have no bearing on anything. That's his personal beliefs and the way that he chooses to do things. I don't like to use the word persons in the Trinity, too. The Trinity is another aspect of um, the Bible that is very philosophical, where people just kind of come up with stuff. Who cares? Unless you make it a salvation issue or a major doctrinal issue, it's not a big deal. But there are people who are making a big deal out of this. And I have, you know, I'm honestly befounded as to people are actually saying that Jesus is the son of God eternally. Like what? In the beginning, you got the word, the Holy Ghost, and God the Father. I don't know. I mean, that's what the Bible says. And then the word is manifest in the flesh. That's when he got his name. That's what they call him on earth. We call him Jesus. 
But then when he goes back up to heaven, is he still called Jesus? I have no idea. The Bible doesn't say. Seems like he's called the Lamb or he's called the Word. That's what it seems like to me. But, yeah. And there's this whole thing about begotten son and all that stuff. All right. So we're going to read, you know, a bit of this article. This is probably going to go on for like 20 minutes because it's a long article. We'll just see. Again, this is on Christian Courier. Just searching because this is something that nobody teaches and I kind of want was interested in it. So here we go. Errors regarding Christ's nature have been around since the Savior was on earth. Well, of course. Some of the Jews contended that demon-possessed, mentally deranged, yes, they all hated, the Jews hated Jesus. In the second century, Tecostis, whatever, I appear charged that Jesus was a mere spirit without being fleshly body. He only appeared to be human. See, everyone's got their own ideas. Later, a monk named Arius, AD 250 to 336 argued that there was a time when the son was not supposedly the father created him a modern Jehovah's Witnesses has a similar yeah it's a created it's a created Jesus it's a created Jesus the United Pentecostal sect one of the biggest um, supposedly Christian denominations out there Pentecostals alleges that Jesus and the father are the same person Believe in modalism. Modalism. And that's fine. You know, they can believe in modalism, but to teach that to other people without having the preface before it, this is my opinion, this is what I think, but to teach it as absolute fact is garbage. Is absolute garbage. Some today suggest that he did not exist at all. Um, nobody does. Everybody knows Jesus existed. Or if he did, there was nothing more than a good man or a wise philosopher. He wasn't a philosopher. The catalog could be extended. The errors regarding Jesus were manifold. The larger community of Christendom has rejected most of these errors. And there's the point here. When there's doctrine that's being put out there, and people are teaching it as not like just their own opinion, just their own opinion, but they're teaching it as absolute fact. Like, this is what the Bible says, and they're teaching it as fact, and they're slamming the Bible down on their pulpit and all this stuff, and they're teaching it like, this is what it is, and it doesn't match up with anything that anybody else is saying. You really have to look at that person. You really have to, and be like, ooh, I don't know. I don't know, man. And a lot of times these people will come out with these little little itty bitty doctrine things that are very philosophical that don't have any basis in the Bible really they're kind of wishy-washy and they preach them as though they're absolute fact and things like this and man you really got to watch out for them people and you're really going to get turned to error when you look at this stuff and the biggest thing is if nobody else is doing that Nobody else is, is, is doing a modalism thing. There's nobody out there. Um, apparently, oneness, Pentecostal, um, Christian told me about that. Uh, apparently, they do the modalism thing, and that's fine with them. But do they, save that you're, do they say that you're not saved unless you believe like us? That's my question. You know, people want to view the Trinity their own ways or... Um, whatever, and the basic teaching is it's three persons in one, and you can't understand it. That's the basic teaching. You go off into all this other stuff, you can't really support it with Scripture. And it doesn't become a problem unless you say, well, you're not saved unless you believe like us. And, you know, that's what cults do. That's It's just what cults do. Origin and growth of the eternal sonship theory. Several of the church fathers, occasionally, notice the language, church fathers, Catholic, occasionally used language that hinted at the eternal generation doctrine, but appears to have been most vocal introduction with origin, 185-254, a scholar in Alexandria, Catholic, whose mind shot off ideas like a Roman candle, as someone has said. Here's what he wrote, Jesus Christ himself, this is origin, 
who came into the world was born of the father uh oh born of the father before all creatures that after he had been the servant of the father in the creation of all things for by him were all things made he in the last times divesting himself of glory and became man and was incarnate although although god uh emphasis added that's not a very good clear sentence but anyways jesus is a created being according to what this idiot wrote okay uh, 2,000 years ago, roughly. Something like that. Origin. The theory obviously gained momentum because it was incorporated in Nicene Creed 8325A. Man, Catholic. Catholic Church. There you go. Christ is described as Son, only begotten, firstborn of all creation, begotten of the Father before all ages. Catholic. Everyone, you know, people don't understand that. Nicene Creed and all that, and we have the Protestants and all this stuff when they're forming the Catholic Church. Well, um, they're all Catholic. Everybody was Catholic. You, coming after the Dark Ages, all this junk. Everybody's Catholic. Nobody knows nothing. And what do we have? Uh, Luther, Martin Luther out there, who's, who's hailed the savior of uh, Christianity for breaking away from the church? No, Martin Luther... Uh, the guy was a, uh, you know, what do you call them? One of them cult guys. No, he was just following orders. Later, Augustine, 354 to 430, provided the notion with considerable notoriety. Philip Schaff described Augustine as one who possessed a speculative spirit. Okay. <laughs> a depiction that certainly holds true with reference to his thoughts on the Godhead. Schaff notes that by... His discrimination speculation, he deserted more influence on the scholastic theology and that of Reformation than all the... Not, yeah, it's some dude. It comes down to some dude. It's not in the text, but some dude says this. Some dude said this somewhere. Doesn't matter if it's 1,500 years ago. Some dude said something, and he was a king, and therefore you have to listen to it. And you got to believe that. Um, no. I don't have to believe that. I I got my Bible, and I never got ever in the fact, ever, ever, that Jesus was the Son of God the Father forever, eternally, going forward in the future or back into the past. If Jesus created everything, and Jesus is the Word, who's right there with the Father, and it talks about in the beginning, and it talks about where did the Holy Ghost come from then? I mean, you're you're at the point where you're literally talking about God the Father went to a celestial bar somewhere and picked up the Holy Ghost, and between the two of them, then they had a son they called Jesus. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And it's falling into... The th not the three persons are one, but the three persons are three, three different gods. And God the Father is the mightiest of all of them, right? That's what it's falling into. And it's just garbage. I mean, people can believe this stuff all they want to. You want to believe this garbage? Go ahead and believe it. No one teaches this stuff, all right? Nobody. Nobody is going to teach this. Unless you're in a cult. If you're in a cult, yeah, Jehovah's Witnesses or something like that. If God, uh, Jesus is a created being, yeah. If you're a Muslim, yeah. Okay. But if you're a Christian, nobody teaches this stuff. Brief analysis of the eternal sonship doctrine. So everyone knows what we're talking about. There are numerous, numerous biblical passages that affirm eternity if the divine individual became the Christ. Isaiah designates him as everlasting father, signifying his eternal nature. Micah said that his goings forth are from old, from everlasting. Note the verbal tenses in John's gospel. The word was God. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, 
it doesn't say Jesus there, but we all know who it is. Jesus stated before Abraham was born, I am. Christ prayed for the Father to glorify him with glory which I had with thee before the world was. In addition, many Old Testament passages speak of Jehovah are applied to Christ. This special name for God is a designation suggesting one who is absolutely self-existent, i.e. one having no beginning or dependence on another. Um, Paul frequently referred to Jesus as Lord, a term used in the Greek Old Testament to replace the sacred name. Paul could have used this word as almost exclusive title for Jesus without, in his mind, identifying Jesus as Yahweh. Here's the thing. Um, after Jesus leaves, he's died, sacrificed on the cross, he goes, is buried, and is resurrected. Is he really referred to as Jesus after that, or does he have a different title? People might refer to him as passing, in passing, but actually speaking to him, Paul called him Lord. John calls him King of Kings, Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lamb on the right hand of God. Does he ever call him Jesus at that point? On the other hand, there is no biblical text that speaks of an eternal generation or an eternal procession of the pre-incarnate Christ. Father precedes the Son. I don't really have to go into this because it's obvious. A father has to precede a son. So when you go into this holy thing where um, Jesus has to be the eternal son or the eternal begotten son, we can get into begotten too. Well, then who's his father? And he must have been created later. You have to make that conclusion. And these people who actually um, put this garbage out here about uh, Jesus being the son eternally, they don't seem to want to answer that. They say the father and son have always been eternal. Okay. Where's the mother? And there's a problem there. Mary was Jesus' mother on earth as the son of man. So if he was eternally the son, does that mean Mary is eternal? <gasps> oh, look, we have Catholic doctrine. Isn't that what the Catholics teach? Mary is the, is the mother of God. That's what they teach. Begotten is not eternal. If it is the case that a second person of the Godhead was begotten, he is not eternal God, for eternity is an intr intrinsic quality of deity. God is from everlasting to everlasting. So there is a very important implication. If doctrine by necessary implication negates the G deity of Jesus Christ, can one be considered faithful who espouses it? And this is where people go off, and they're going to call people heretics about stuff like this. Because that's a good point. If you're denying the deity of Christ, which you are, if you're saying that he was a created being, um, he's eternally the son of God, you are messed up. Am I saying you're lost? No. But you shouldn't go talking that stuff on the internet. You shouldn't go try and teach people that doctrine. You can say, this is my opinion about stuff. Maybe. And then you're going to get a bunch of flack like, from people like me. We're going to be like, dude, that's, that's garbage, and here's why. Because we're trying to teach you and show you where your errors are. Contradictory language. The dogma is, decredit, it is discredited logically by self-contradiction. To contend that the Son was eternally begotten is a manifest contradiction of terms. It is equivalent of saying Christ had an eternal beginning, right? Because you're trying to take the term begotten, 
which means you're basically manifest. You're trying to take that term and apply it to the past, present, future. And it's ridiculous. We're talking about God here. We're talking about God. Always existed. Always existed. First John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. It doesn't say the Father, the Son, and the Mommy. Because there's a lot of cults out there that want to say the Holy Ghost is feminine, and I guess that's going to be the Mommy. No, it says Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Okay, we're talking on scripture here about stuff that's in, incompatible with it. And um, I've already gone for 20 minutes. And what I want to get to is the alleged proofs for eternal sonship doctrine. And, oh man, there's a lot of, a lot of verses there. All right, well, we're, well, we'll do some of it. We'll do some of it. Proverbs 8.25, one author asserts, see, the scriptural proof of the doctrine, eternal generation, may be thus given. Our Lord, the wisdom God, spoken, as begotten before the mountains and the hills were made. So, what? how was that a proof text? It says, this statement is without substance for the following reasons. The context deals with the qualities of wisdom, which has been personified for emphasis. Wisdom is not reference to Christ. Note, the feminine pronouns. Yeah, when you see feminine pronouns in the Bible, you really kind of have to watch out. Yeah. Um, now they're going to the ASV, so I don't really want to read that. Hebrew 7.3. Some have contended that Hebrew 7.3 implies Son of God existed before Melchizedek. Okay. Where is that in the Bible? In Christology, in school, they teach you Melchizedek is a picture of Christ in Christology. So, Son of God existed before Melchizedek. Okay. Since the ancient priest king was made like unto the Son of God. Made like unto wasn't the Son of God. He was made like unto. The phrase made like unto is intended to emphasize a chronic chronological order of existence. Rather, it merely stresses an analogy in terms of priesthood. Yes. Christ's priesthood abides continually, so did Melchizedek's, i.e., it did not have a genealogical con commencement and termination. Predominantly in this book, Christ said to, a, to be a priest after the order of Melchizedek. It is clear from mention, not from Germain. Okay. As Milligan cautioned, great care is therefore necessary in dealing with these relative terms and expressions, lest peradventure we give them extension which is wholly beyond what was intended by the Holy Spirit. I like John, so we're going to read John too. John 5, 26. It is alleged that John 5, 26 supports the doctrine of eternal sonship. For as the Father has life in himself, even so he gave the Son also to have life in himself. Mm -hmm. I have my own commentary, but I'll let Professor Charles Hodge talk about this. But Professor Charles Hodge of Princeton Theological Cemetery, a militant advocate of this theory, conceded that this text in John's Gospel pertained to the incarnate Son of God, not the pre-incarnate Logos. It has no bearing on the controversy. So even people who are militant, militant people who are like, Jesus is always eternally the Son of God, have to admit, yeah, there's no biblical reason for that. There is no scripture. There's no nothing. And, you know, if people want to believe that, that's fine. That's fine. But don't go out there calling people liars and call them heretics and call them all this stuff because they don't believe like you do. That's it. You know, I don't believe this crap. I don't believe this. This is junk. God, Jesus, the Son of God eternally? No. This is Catholic teaching. This is Catholic, 100% Catholic teaching. That's where it comes from. And 
I only went through one article on Christine Courier. They know right right back where it comes from. It comes from Nicaean, Nicaean Agreement, whatever they did. Back in like 325 AD, something like that. Start of the Catholic Church. Yeah. And you have that permanent God the Son factor in there. Well, then you have to have a permanent mother. And the Catholics love their Mary. Don't they? I'm sure you can worship Mary wherever the heck you want to go in a Catholic church. They probably get a statue of her everywhere. And you're going to say, I'm assuming, you know, I shouldn't do that, but pretty much the embodiment of the Holy Spirit then goes to Mary because she's going to be the mother, and then you have God the Father, and then you have the Son of God, who is going to be Jesus Christ. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Mary was just a woman. She's not God. And the Bible states that Jesus created everything. So... Um, if he created everything, then um, how did God the Father create him? There are three persons in one. And it's a long, long philosophical argument about all this different stuff, you know, including like the Trinity is a, a philosophical argument. And I, I'll just say, you know, that's my opinion on this stuff. And that's how it goes. And if you, if you stayed tuned for this long, I'd like to congratulate uh, Brian Denlinger for finally uploading a video after two weeks about liars. I, you know, if I had an hour of my time to waste to watch your video about liars, I would really like to hear you talk about apologizing for, apologizing for lying to people and stealing their money. I think it would be nice to hear that apology and, you know, speaking heresy and things like that. And also apologizing for calling yourself a pastor. I, I think that would be a good thing. I would, I would actually, you know, maybe I'll make an hour out of my week or something like that to watch that video. But I'm looking forward to hearing it. And, you know, I'm I, kudos to you for, for doing that. Of course, obviously, Brian ain't going to do that. So anyways, this has been, was Jesus the son of God eternally? And that's what we got. We're out of here.